started making games spring of 2021 using the Unity game engine. But I've changed since then, and we'll be using the dough now. Was it the right decision? Are my games better? You'll have to watch to find out. This year, I released a total of nine-ish games, five of which are complete. Let's talk a little about what was made. Jumpity Doodle was the first game I made in Godot. Cut all that boring stuff. You need to play this game. You can run, you can jump, you can dash, you can climb. What more could you ask for in the game? All right, back to the pretty lady. And it holds a very dear place in my heart because it was the first game that I finished, released on itch, heard feedback, and fixed it. After Jumpity Doodah, I was impressed with how easy it was to make games in Godot. But just a little warning, the next game is not for the lighthearted. So next, I wanted to make a shooting game. And also have some story and atmosphere and a goal to it, because there wasn't any of that in Jumpity Doodah. Why am I jumping? So in this game, you're a plague doctor, and you need to find a cure. But one of the ingredients is the venom to a vicious and terrifying creature called the Tarantipute. Although the story is on point in this game, the game mechanics are not. I couldn't find an efficient way at the time to shoot the Tarantipoot acid, and it shoots at a crazy random velocity, which is not good in games, because an enemy attack should follow a pattern so that beating it takes skill and not luck. I'd actually like to go back to this game and properly implement it. After Tarantipoot, I started moving the progress for Hypatia from Unity to Godot. I scraped a lot of the old assets and changed the look of the game, but I didn't have a clear plan. So after a bit of work and a bit of scattered progress, I went back to creating little games. On the stream, I held a little competition. The chosen viewer would receive a game made by me and directed by them. Necro was the winner, a fellow game dev who was creating his own game. Through Necro's direction, I created Raptor, a space shooting game based off of Galaga. Fight waves of enemies, get power-ups, and try to get the high score. This is the first time I implemented a scoreboard, and it was super easy using the Silent Wolf add-on. This game is pretty addicting, try it out. Don't you just love those speed typing games? I do. The next game was based off of it, and I feel it brought my game making skills to the next level. Looking back, I see how I combined the skills and lessons from the other games to produce it. First off, there's the story. Your cute little spider climbing a beanstalk to make it to your love at the top. Second, there's a leaderboard we learned how to make in the last game. Next, the scoreboard draws from Mario to calculate. It uses the time took to complete and how many leaves you got. And of course, the difficulty reflects on the score. But it was the first time I added character and difficulty selection and a cutscene, all of which are a nice touch to any game. Play this game and you'll type like this. After Spider Stock, I made two more prototypes. And while having fun on all these short term projects, I heard Hypatia calling to me. It felt really good to come back. In my Unity implementation, I never even thought about level design. I had a hill here, a cave here, and Athens here, with some random space in between. I read books on level and game design, and I also downloaded Tiled, an open source application that helps create 2D tiled-based map. This improved my workflow by a lot. I also knew I needed a smarter enemy, so I spent a lot of time working on the enemy AI script. But it finally got to the point where Hypatia felt like a fun game. During this time, I also got great progress on the enemies, some key areas, the combat, XP, the skill tree layout, and the dialogue system. But the game still didn't feel right. I still didn't know what I was doing. I was reading all these game design books, and I knew I had missed something very important. By the way, I can't recommend these two game dev books more. Rules of Play is a masterclass on making games, and an architectural approach to level design helped me when I was struggling so much to make levels. Use my Amazon links in the description, and you'll be directly supporting the channel. Thanks. I still hadn't come up with the story, the goals, the progression, the why. I was so obsessed with pumping out features and I didn't work on the root of my game. So I decided to take my doggo for one week of solitude in the mountain. <laughs> that one week of solitude definitely helped, but I still need to do a lot of work before the story and the roots are complete. And so I vowed not to program any more features for Hypatia until the story is complete. While developing Hypatia, I was challenged by a viewer to make a Pong-like game. But instead of two sides, it had to be in a circle. And so, Pi Pong was born. I quickly got the game mechanics working after an hour, but I wanted a challenge, so I decided to make it my first mobile game ever. The game was fun, and it was super easy making it mobile friendly. But it wasn't until the major graphical update until I really felt excited about it. Turn up that glow! 
I also added multiple game modes. Normal, where the ball speed is the same, but every 20 hits there are phases. Speed, each time you hit the ball it gets a little faster. Obstacle, a random obstacle shape in the middle. Hard, the ball gets faster each time and the paddle gets smaller. Not for the lighthearted. I also added a shop where you can buy skins using coins. You get coins by passing all phases in normal mode. Coins are also used to get one extra life. But what's a mobile game without ads? Okay, 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 hear me out. You could play the whole game with all the features without any ads. Ads just give you a coin, which you can get anyways by getting to level 60. Ads are really annoying to implement because you need to interact with Satan. I mean, Android Studio. So after finishing the core features, I went through the process of publishing to the Google Play Store. And I was rejected because of an issue of how I stated I stored data. I requested permission for external storage, which I didn't need because I was using the game storage. It took a while for me to understand and fix the issue. But other than that big bump, the development went pretty good. Disclaimer, the game is not 100% polished. You might need to smash the ad button a couple times for it to play an ad, but I'm very proud of my baby, so try it out on the Google Play Store now! By the way, quick shout out to Velky for making the amazing Pipong logo and to Crypto for the idea. Appreciate y'all. Late in the year, my game dev skills were needed and I was asked to lay the foundations to a cool Stardew Valley-like game. But this game would have a cute little robot that you can program and automate. Plant crops and buy seeds and tools at the shop. At the time, I was making the transition to Godot 4.0. And after messing around with tile maps, I knew the project had to be done in Godot 4.0, even though it wasn't officially out at the time. It was such a joy to make the game. Also made me so grateful to have made that monumental decision at the start of the year to switch game engines. I was perfectly content with Godot before, but after using 4.0, there was no going back. I loved the progression the engine was making, and I was so happy to be a passenger in its development. So I finished up the Stardew Robot game, and the strength of the tile maps planted the seed for the next project. So next, I really wanted to make a 2D top-down base building game. And as I was building it, I thought about making it survival. And hence, my Minecraft-like survival game Logcraft was created. Am I copying Minecraft? Nah. The creation of Minecraft spawns its own category of games. Just like Dark Souls spawned Soul-like, and Franz Kafka spawned Kafkaesque. But I do know one thing. This year will be another year of game development and learning. I even made a list of goals to ensure that I stay on track for 2023. Goal number one, release a game to Steam. Goal number two, finish my Godot book. So I've been writing a book for beginners. I took a pause because I wanted to wait for 4.0 to come out. Goal number three, make a little 3D game. Goal number four, study the shader. Write the shader. Be the shader. Goal number five, take a peek at the Godot source code. Goal number six, find out the who, what, and why of Hypatia. And the last goal is to make a game in a team. That's all folks. Thank you so much for sticking around and a big thank you to all the Patreons supporting the channel. Hit that subscribe button or I'll make you the enemy to my next game. Thank you. Bye.